What's up, guys, and welcome to another episode of Chartered Territory, where every week I break down the market's movements to help you navigate with confidence. Today, we'll dive into the charts, review the week that's passed, and explore what might be in store for the days ahead. Let's get to it. All right, so first things first, uh, welcome back. And thank you guys very much for last week. I really appreciate the feedback you've given me. As you can see, I've made a few adjustments. The first and the most obvious one being, well, this one, this, this dude right here, uh, staring right into your soul with his uh, shiny forehead. Can't do shit about it, so you're going to have to deal with it. Uh, if, it's, uh, if it gets too bad, just put on some sunglasses. Anyway, uh, apparently it's a whole thing. It's a big thing in, in crypto to, to dox yourself. Uh, but we're here, we're alive and kicking. Uh, in traditional markets, it's, um, it's less, of a, less of a thing to, to dox yourself. It's, uh, it's not unheard of to just trade under your real name and post under your real name. And as I do consider myself a, 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 a trader in general and not so much a crypto trader, um i figured this would make things a little bit a little bit more personal so uh yeah there we go second one being i adjusted the resolution uh, this should be um a, a video of better quality uh, i was told it wasn't the best quality when you uh, watch the video on youtube i don't know if that has anything to do with the way i export videos or uh, or if it was the resolution i uh, i have an ultra wide monitor so it makes things a little difficult to, uh, to uh, export the video in 1920 by uh, 1080, I think. So hopefully this will be better. Um, and before you think um, uh, this is some kind of subliminal message with the shirt and the ape now, please do note it is not a subliminal message of any kind. This is just a random t-shirt I put on. And this definitely does not mean I am uh, telling you or, or, or implying that you should, in fact, ape now, because I don't think you should. Uh, yeah, so let's just, uh, let's just dive right in. Again, last week, not the most exciting of weeks. Uh, I had a few trades. Uh, I won't go over them for too long. Um, I was told I should spend a little bit more time on, on crypto markets, so I'll try and see what I can do. Uh, however, first trade is a, um, is a, is a, is a nice one. I didn't get to target, but a good trade nonetheless. And I just want to show you guys how I go over a trade like this. So we got the, um, we got the daily market here. Let me just go back a little bit. As you can see, we have clear consolidation. There's structure building. Let me just say something before I get into this. If I use the word resistance, or if I use the word support, like many traders do, it doesn't actually mean something is support or something is resistance. Like I told you guys last week, it's, it's, it's all a matter of probability. So it's pretty simple. I mean, if, if price goes up to, let's say $25 and it rejects, and it goes back down and it goes up back to $25 and it rejects the probability of $25 being resistance increases. It's never a hundred percent. It it never is, but it's pretty retarded to tell to, to tell you guys this every single time or to tell anyone that every single time. I cannot go, okay, so this may be uh, resistance and this may be support. Um, due to the fact price has uh, interacted with that level multiple times, so now it may be support. I mean, if I if I have to talk like that, I mean, th that's not a way to uh, communicate. So just uh, keep that in the back of your mind. So we have a region that is looking to be resistance. Now, in this case, I went for the most extreme high. Um, and to uh, to act as uh, my final point of resistance. 
Um, price always moves in the way of least resistance. And for resistance to clear, it needs to get across certain hurdles, certain price points. Because again, let's say $25 is resistance or acts as resistance and sellers are just exhausted. There are no more sellers left at $25. That is due to the fact, and George Soros can explain that way better to you, but it's all a matter of markets are uh, reflexive. It's the concept of reflexive, reflexivity, sorry. Markets change and market participants change. We all have expectations. We all have, have, have a certain view of how the world should work, how markets should work, and it never does. It, it, it rarely does. And therefore, our, our minds change, our perception, perceptions change, our expectations change, and that is why markets change. Um, so yeah, we got, this, we got this, 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 this consolidation here. Price is acting uh, as resistance here. I wanted to clear this hurdle before saying, all right, market has broken out of this structure. Um, so we actually got the break here. This is a very important candle to me. Um, this is a confirmation of a breakout from this structure, meaning I will want to go long at the last high pre-breakout, which is this high here. Uh, let me go forward all the way. Oh, sorry. Oh, there we go. Uh, let me go back to the hourly. We got the trade set up here. So this was the, the daily candle that, that was a last, uh, that was a thrust candle through the last uh, high that I marked. Now I want to go long the last, the absolute high last uh, pre-breakout, which is this high right here. However, in certain cases, I will ladder into trades. I will have two trades, two uh, orders in to to enter a trade not everybody does this you should test it out for yourself uh, the advantage is you're going to be more certain of an entry never absolutely sure but this will make it a little more certain uh, that you're going to get an entry however you're going to risk or you're going to sacrifice R. Uh, I can just show you this real simple if i would have only gotten this entry the R on the tra trade would have been three and a half, meaning for every dollar I risk, I stand to gain three and a half dollars if price goes to target. If I get this entry, and only this entry, R is lowering to 1.69, which is a lot lower. Um, if I get both entries, it's going to be somewhere in the middle, which is still over 2R, which is, which is great to me. However, as you can see, I did not get the lower entry, but I got the higher entry up there. I know quite a few people traded this high here and missed their entry, which uh, is too bad, but you just move on to the next trade. Wanted to trade it up to the previous high, got it, took partial profits, and I'll tell you why in a, in a second, uh, because I, I kept uh, part of the position open for way higher. Uh, however, stopped out due to CPI volatility below this uh, candle here, which is too bad. However, still looking at uh, at, at Swissy. Um, as we've broken through this high here, closed on the daily, which means I took my uh, entry based on uh, a daily signal, meaning I'm also trading it over. I want to trade it to up to the next daily uh, level, which is this high here. Uh, we got a really nice retest for now on this level. If uh, we open the market tonight, uh, and this will keep or this will keep acting as as support, I'll probably re-enter this and look into trade it up until here. So that was a winner for last week. Uh, wheat was another winner, kind of the same concept. Uh, we got a bottom in, bottom in structure here. I think I went over this trade as well last week. We got the close through the highs here with this candle. Uh, back to the hourly. We can see the same setup, kind of the same setup, uh, because this hourly candle did not close through those highs here, meaning the trade differs a little bit. Uh, the reason I did still take it is because I considered this an inverse head and shoulders. 
meaning the chart pattern completed here, uh, meaning I want to trade it up until the next uh, target. Uh, but, but sometimes, sometimes I'll just uh, combine uh, uh, trading strategies. And that's what I did here. Uh, didn't want to long the, the actual retest of the neckline uh, because these highs here are naked levels, which I prefer to trade. Uh, entered the market, got, uh, onto the, got the position, the direction right. Uh, when this high here was breached with this thrust candle here, I didn't want to see price go back below the thrust candle. As you can see, it did, so I was uh, stopped down. Again, if this, no, actually, this, uh, this market is done for me now. Uh, so yeah, let's go to the, um, a few indices, just uh, real quick. As you can see, the DAX, still bullish, still new all-time highs. Uh, I mean, not actual new all-time highs, but we're still in, in all-time highs territory. Uh, we got the, the UK 100, the FTSE, not doing jack shit just sideways price action, boring as hell. We got the NASDAQ pushing up to all-time highs once again. We got the Russell still trending up. Uh, usually I will put on a 200-day uh, moving average, um, which I'll tell you more about in a second. As you can see, we're just, we're above the 200-day moving average on every single index. That's, that's not bearish, guys. That is, that is bullish. That's good. Uh, US 30, Dow Jones, all-time highs, S&P, obviously going to be the same thing, uh, all-time highs as well. So these markets are looking good. You know, this is what really fucking sucks. People will go, yeah, you know, and they do, and I, I, know, I know they do, and I know I've said that as well last week. Markets correlate, and if indices are, are trending up, it does tell you something about risk, um, risk appetite. It tells you something about what traders are, are looking for, um, uh, the amount of risk they're willing to take. And indices have just been going up for, for forever, really. And they've just been making all-time highs every week, almost every week. And that would mean, or that could mean, um, and that makes sense, that crypto should go up too, right? I mean, crypto is a risk asset. But what has crypto done? Well, crypto hasn't done fuck all. We've, we haven't made any new all-time highs for seven months, which is a pretty long time considering, again, the fact that indices are, are trending up all the time. Um, Bitcoin is below the 200-day moving average. And again, I've said this, la this last week as well. On crypto, I used a 25, 52, fucking hell, 52 a week moving average because crypto markets are up 24-7. Uh, However, again, most people will use the 200-day moving average, I believe. And if more people are looking at the 200-day moving average, or if a lot of people are looking at the 200-day moving average, it is worth noting. It is worth having a look at. And in general, and I do really mean in general, if price is below the 200-day moving average, at least it is in traditional markets, it's not bullish. It's, it's not bullish. It isn't bearish per se. I mean, I don't just look at the, um, at the moving averages. But again, keep it in mind. However, on the 52 moving average, you'll just see we're trending up. Um, so... If you, choose, if you choose one in crypto, I'd go for the 52. And if you start using one, only use one. Don't be like, all right, well, um, yeah, you know, I usually use a 200-day moving average, and it's below the 200-day moving average. I don't like that. I dislike that. Uh, so I'd rather use the 52 so it uh, confirms with my, um, with my bias. So it confirms my bias. That obviously sucks. So don't do that. All right. Before we dive into the charts, I want to give a quick shout out to our sponsor, Exception. If you trade on chain, you need to try Exception. I mean, we've all been there, trading on MetaMask, Phantom, Dextools, or really any other Dex wallet, only to have swaps fail or get hit with ridiculous fees. And how great would it be to just set limit orders for any token, 
so you can buy the dips or take profits without constantly having to check the market. Imagine going to bed knowing you won't wake up to another coin that dropped 99% because you could not set a stop loss or missing out on huge profits because you didn't have a take profit order set. And that's where exception steps in. Now look, I've tried plenty of Telegram trading bots and let me just tell you, exception stands out. I wouldn't partner with them if I did not believe they were the best in the game. Plus, they share the revenue they earn through fees with holders of their token and traders using their bot. This bot streamlines on-chain trading and makes it so much more efficient, which is exactly what you need in fast-moving markets like these. Check them out using the link in the description below. Right, so in general, I won't be buying, uh, I'll never buy, almost never buy previous support. I, I, I usually buy, almost always buy previous resistance. Uh, when I want to trade the long side, obviously, when, I, when I'm when i trading the short side, I'll, I'll, I'll buy or I sell previous uh, support. Uh, however, in, in certain cases, I will buy a uh, an SFP, a swing fill pattern. Uh, meaning a, a low is put in, uh, price trades back to that low, but the candle closes, the, the low of that candle will be higher than the uh, previous swing low. The definitions differ slightly between uh, traders, but in general, that is, that is what I will use. Um, and I only look at them if they're on the weekly, sometimes on the daily, and they have to be at significant points. They have to be an actual low. I don't, I don't look at the, at the hourly and go, you know, price has been here twice. So now this is a, a swing fill pattern. That's, that's not what I do. I know a lot of people traded this low here for Bitcoin. Um, obviously in hindsight, I've could have done, should have done the same because it would have been a, a very nice trade. Uh, but I didn't. However, I watched price develop, price action develop. Uh, we reclaimed the low here after this break. Uh, wanted to see price go back here and 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 uh, position long. Price didn't, as it does often. Price will just fuck you over and keep moving away, especially in crypto, especially in aggressive, um, uh, in volatile markets. Uh, price keeps moving up. We got the little structure here. Price breaks above it. Tried entering long on this candle. Did not give it to me. Price just keeps moving up. Uh, initially, I wanted to short this level. The reason I didn't is because this high was put in. Now, if price would have done this, like go below and just aggressively move into this price point again, I would have definitely gone short. But with the with the creation of this price point here, this creates a uh, an FTA, a first trouble area, meaning this could act as resistance once entering short, uh, meaning the R would have been diminished completely. Um, so I pulled the order and uh, tried positioning uh, long, but again, as you can see, no entry was given whatsoever. I'll probably look to, uh, to enter long uh, this week, the week ahead. Not quite sure when, not quite sure how. Uh, ideally, I would just like to see us break above um, this sloping trend line here. Uh, that would mean a uh, an, an actual breakout out of this megaphone pattern, inverted triangle. Um, call it as you uh, as you wish. But that would be uh, that would be the best trade to me personally, uh, because it doesn't really matter much what happens in between here. Uh, it's still chopping. We're just chopping. I mean, if you're trying to trade this, you can, and people do, but it, it's not my thing. Uh, and, and, and chopping, uh, chopping markets aren't uh, aren't great to me personally. Uh, so yeah, not much to add on on Bitcoin. Let me check Ethereum. Somebody asked me a question um, because it seemed I was bearish Ether, but then I was bullish Bitcoin and other crypto. Um, and if we're talking correlating markets i mean if crypto correlates pretty much one-on-one -on -one. um so what what do i do in a situation like this where i'm kind of bearish ether but bullish bitcoin i'll still trade the the chart as is i mean there's always going to be outliers there's always going to be outperformance 
outperformance doesn't mean, and I know that that, that if 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 Bitcoin uh, goes up, it must mean Ether goes down, and therefore it outperforms. That is not what outperformance means. Bitcoin could go up three percent, and Ether could go up two and a half percent, and it would still mean Bitcoin outperformed Ether. Uh, but if the chart just tells me this is this isn't looking good, I will I will treat it treat it as such. Uh, because why would you introduce extra or additional factors that would that make trading um, much more complex? To me, it's kind of the same as people who are who spend a lot of time on the afterlife, and um, I don't have any trouble or any problems with that, but life as is 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 pretty complex i mean i don't have to tell any of you guys that uh and spending most of your time thinking of what happens after this life is uh is is, is unnecessarily complex and with trading it's it's pretty much the same trading as is is pretty damn hard i mean i think it's pretty damn hard and maybe maybe it's uh maybe that's just me but to me it's pretty hard um and and, and any any extra additional factors that that that, that are necessary, that are, are an essential to trading, just make it that much more harder, uh, that much more hard. I don't know. Uh, so yeah, just I just trade price uh, as it is presented to me. Again, Ether does not look good. It, it doesn't. Uh, you could say this huge low was uh, swept here again, uh, and we're now moving away from those uh, lows. But it's it's you know it's right at at support of the of the uh, higher time frame channel, um, as I've said last week. We got the 200 day moving average. We're below that one, and the 52 moving average. We're below that one as well, meaning we're just trading below the yearly average, uh, and that is almost never never bullish, and it is almost always bearish. So if Ether does break below the uh, of, or out of the channel, and, and and if it crosses this low here, I'm going to be balls deep short, and definitely target around 1500. Uh, Solana, 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 kind of the same thing. I mean, I went over this last week as well, and I don't have I don't have a lot of extra uh, info on this one, uh, or any additional thoughts, but uh, it still does look like a uh, descending triangle support around 120 has been tested a lot of times i mean i mean a lot of times um uh, if it goes back to 120 again i don't see it holding i do not see it holding i would not trade this market unless we cross or close below the uh, the sloping trend line here you could of course speculate that we revisit the the high here the trend line here uh, and look for a trade on the hourly that will take you up to that uh trend line which is a pretty pretty good trade no not not a pretty good trade it's a it's a huge trade so you could go in and say look we got this high here got the high here which is a pretty nice uh support resistance flip we got the resistance here resistance here resistance here go up test it as support it acts as support go back acts as support now it breaks below support comes back up and is resistance again um i could see myself depending on price action trade this um if we manage to close below the level come back down test it as support cross the highs here over to the left uh which will most likely act as a temporary resistance probably reject close above it retest the highs as support and target this high that's how i could trade this um again it all depends on price action look if you if you look at price action uh over the last week I mean, we we did go up, uh, and Bitcoin will look, will look the same. Every every uh, every um, crypto coin will look the same. I don't like this price action. It's it's upwards, but it's not convincing. Uh, there's no thrust candles. There's no aggression. It's just drifting up. Uh, I don't like that. I don't like that. That that usually doesn't doesn't play out too well. Uh, this is a little more convincing to me. I, I thought it was going to look a little bit more of the same. 
Uh, this is a little bit, little bit more convincing to me, but Solana, I don't know. It, it's not convincing. This price action isn't convincing. So I could see us uh, um, nuking down again. And when I say nuking down, I don't mean we're going to go to uh, $80 in a single candle. But I think price will give a, a better and a more convincing entry to me next week instead of just going long around here somewhere. Uh, and I think it will be either this one here or it'll be it'll be uh, uh, lower. Uh, let me go over another trade I did last week as well uh, was Rune. I was pretty bullish on Rune uh, due to the fact we had this huge high here, a uh, huge swing high. Uh, traded up on two, uh, up into this high, moved back. Moved away from the high, moved back up, and then I got, I got a convincing close here. Uh, so I went long somewhere around here. Obviously, uh, closed the trade here. Stop didn't go off, but I uh, obviously hated the, the price action going on. Uh, went back up, pre-longed it again, got back down, closed the trade. Uh, meaning I was stopped out manually twice on the trade. And I usually don't try more than twice to uh, to get the same uh, trade right. Uh, so I actually went short, uh, not because I wanted to squeeze money out of this market, but, but because I got an actual reason for it. We're trading here. We got this price structure here. And then we get this candle right over here. Uh, this is a thrust candle that closes through these lows all these lows here and these lows here that is significant to me and i want to be short the last low pre-breakdown which is this one here got the entry my stop was not above this candle but it was above this candle right here uh, crypto squeezes so you got to be careful with uh, with um, stopping out unnecessarily so i will widen my stop every now and then in crypto uh got the first target here i marked this level as a potential uh, uh level of interest uh got the first target here uh, to partial profits and i wanted to see price trade down to 442 however as you can see we did not get it uh, after this candle here i moved my stop above the the thrust candle but i closed the trade uh after this uh after this um uh, structure over over here this is uh too much of a consolidation to me i was looking to add as well uh, potentially but but did not do so closed the trade and in hindsight it was uh it was the right decision obviously you could could say this is a bear flag so we got the the, mo the pull the mass uh the pull and then we got the the flag here and uh, we could have traded down markets do tend to trade in um equal parts so what you'll see many times is that if the move down uh up to the uh jesus christ what's a good color to use on this let's use yellow ah it sucks let's just use orange fuck it again uh price moves down here uh consolidates either in a bull flag or a bear flag and then once it moves out of the flag out of the consolidation it'll uh it'll put in an equal move it's a trade up. I trade quite a lot. Uh, uh, as you can see, I even marked the uh, the potential level for that move, uh, but price uh, decided something else. So yeah, that's uh, that's room. Markets for next week. Looking at Lido, believe it or not. I'm sorry, guys. It's uh, uh yeah, it's a boomer coin. Lido's a boomer coin. Uh, sorry, Lido and Litecoin is even more of a boomer coin, but they're looking pretty good. Uh, and I'll tell you why. This could be a pretty big uh, bottoming structure. This could be a, a, an inverse head and shoulder forming. And you could play this um, in, in two ways. One is going to be more risky than the other. Um, if you do decide to think of correlation, if you do tend to think crypto is bottoming, or is about to put in um, uh, a bullish trend, an upward trend, you could speculate this is going to be forming an inverse head and shoulders, meaning this will be trading uh, 
up to the neckline, which does mean a move of almost 30%, which is significant. Uh, all you're going to have to do is look for an entry on the lower time frame. To me, it'll be clearing this high here. Uh, if it clears this high here, depending the way it does, on the way it does, I will be looking to make that play and trade it up to 138 for the inverse head and shoulder to, uh, to complete. Please do be aware of the lows here. Uh, a lot of people will be shorting, um, potentially. So do be aware of that. I won't be closing the trade here, but I will uh, watch price action carefully. Watch how price action develops. If it does complete the inverse head and shoulder, we got the actual pattern completed, completed and you could trade the top of the head to the neckline and then extrapolate it to here. And that is going to be, at least in crypto, it's going to be your target for the inverse head and shoulder. I'll probably trade it up until here uh, and see what gives. When a pattern completes, uh, especially on the daily, and especially if we close the daily above uh, this price here, I have to put it slightly up here. Uh, I'll enter the, tr the trade immediately uh, on 50% and then I'll add another 50% if price retests uh, the neckline. So if we close, go back, that's another 50%. Uh, doesn't really matter, matter to me how much we close the daily above the neckline, I'll just enter 50%. Uh, so that's one trade. Uh, then we got the other one I'm looking at is Litecoin. I've tried playing this already, uh, which obviously failed. Uh, but I'll try and play this again. We got the ascending triangle at a, at a nice uh, uh, higher time frame potential bottom zone, bottoming zone. Uh, if price closes the daily above 70 again, I will try and, and uh, position long uh, at least up to $80. Depending on what happens, you know, price can trend or trade way, way higher, especially in crypto. Are these the most interesting markets in crypto right now? Obviously not. I mean, obviously not. Uh, I do trade um, um, uh, modern coins as well, trendy coins. If Tau, I mean, it, it probably won't, but if it will, if it'll, uh, if, if it'll um, retest the highs here, I'm definitely going to be to be bidding uh, at around uh, three sixty four. But as you can see, you know, price is just doing its thing, moving away from you. You could trade the equal parts uh, uh, move again here as well. Price goes up, consolidates. Uh, this is a, a different kind of uh, a flag. Probably go for the high here. If it breaks out of this structure, it'll most likely, most likely go way, way higher. Uh, we're looking at around 1200, 1240. Uh, so I'll see what I'll do, maybe trade it if it does close above these highs and, uh, and look for a continuation trade. Uh, I did, <laughs> this is, this sucks as well. We got the structure here. We got this thrust candle here, closes through the highs. I'm bidding the last high pre-break, uh, pre-break out, price moves up. I was targeting equal highs. Price moves up, comes back down, doesn't give me a fill, moves back up and uh, reaches target. Um, now you may ask, okay, so why don't you just keep the trade in, keep the order in, price comes back down, you would have been filled here and you would still be able to finish the, the trade the way you wanted it to. Uh, and that would be correct. However, what I just told you about the... Um, which market was it again, where the FTA was put in? That was Bitcoin actually, yeah. Exactly the same thing here. Um, I did not go short here because of this price, this high here. If I entered short, this would have probably, or could have been uh, resistance, meaning I would have been, uh, the, the R diminished. Same thing on Tau. We, we put the, the low in here. If we trend back, trade back, enter the order here, enter the trade here, 
this could be potential uh, resistance. Um, meaning, yeah, the trade just doesn't work uh, the way I wanted it to anymore. So I pulled the order and the trade did not work out. Uh, what I just uh, said, if price does close below the high here, above the high there, I may look too long, but I probably, probably won't, as the highs here could potentially be, uh, the all-time highs could potentially be uh, uh, resistance. Does uh, a previous all-time high always mean it's going to be resistance? Absolutely not. Sometimes you just blast, blast through. Uh, but it's just something to keep in mind. Aside from that, not much to add here, guys. Uh, not much to add. Um, let me see. Dollar Canadian. I know it's not crypto, but it's an interesting market because we have the uh, ascending triangle here. Um, potential resistance. Obviously, this price point has acted as resistance. If the daily closes, manages to close above those uh, those highs, I will be looking to enter uh, long because it'll target most likely around 147, uh, which is the high of the rectangle in uh, in in dollar Canadian, uh, which is actually a really good trade, especially in FX. You're looking at almost six percent. Uh, that's that's significant. That is um, that's that's real nice. Uh, so this is one of the most important markets I'm watching for next week. Let me just go over a few points you may like. We got PopCat. PopCat is just fucking me over every single goddamn time. Um, it's just going up, just trending up. I want you to be long here. As you can see, price moves back. Obviously, uh, people are front running each other. Uh, Miss this trade. Still think we'll go to the um, upward trend line of this uh, channel. Not trading this currently. I am interested in a, a position, but we'll uh, we'll see if we get in. We'll see if we get in. Uh, actually, one went long. Nvidia as well. I know I'm just all over the place right now, but uh, this is kind of a crypto coin for boomers. We got this channel here. Uh, and then we got the uh, symmetrical triangle forming at the top of the uh, at the bottom of the uh, uh, the channel. We break below. Uh, we break uh, above above the uh, above the triangle. Wanted to break above the high here as well uh, for a confirmed breakout. And I'm now targeting the um, the 167 and a half area. Uh, Take this low, put it here. Two percent breakout point. Oh fuck! Logarithmic. You get this level here. Uh, so we'll see. Uh, we'll see what gives. Let me go back to crypto real quick. Move through a bunch of markets, and then I'll answer uh, a few questions. Uh, let me go over this real quickly. This isn't interesting to me. This isn't. This may be interesting. This could potentially be interesting. Nobody really looks at AVAX, but it does put in uh, quite a lot of few good trades. If the high, I probably go for this high here. If the high, if the high of thirty four is is uh, breached. We could potentially be looking at a long up until 54, which is a uh, almost a 30% move. I'll probably look to play this. Uh, so let me put the um, let me put the alert in real quick. Crossing up, moving on. This will this is when people say uh, trading is uh, is fun. It is. But this is pretty much what you do all day. Doge is still it's still it's still a good market. Uh, the thing is though, with with triangles, if price crosses around seventy percent of the apex of the triangle, meaning it squeezes up until the end, uh, it becomes less of a reliable pattern. 
Uh, you want to see price break out of the out of the triangle uh, before it reaches around 70%. If it reaches all the way 80, 90, uh, almost 100%, it's going to be way harder to trade, and the uh, and the uh, the pattern is is usually invalidated. If you look at uh, Coco, same thing. I mean, it's a massive, massive descending triangle. Uh, I know I went over this last week as well. But it's it's reaching. I mean, it's reaching a a zone where it may potentially be invalidated, because what you'll usually usually see is this, it just does something like this, and it's just completely invalidated, and it won't mean much. Uh, it just becomes hard to trade. Uh, so yeah, um, this is uh, this is pretty boring to you guys. If I'm just gonna go over random markets. Um, if you have chart requests, let me know. Okay, so let me just answer a uh, question I uh, I got. Uh, one of the questions, the other question was answered already. Uh, that was the uh, one about correlated markets. Uh, this one is, uh, how do I get started with technical analysis? And what are the most important indicators I should focus on first? Uh, this is a good question. And technical analysis, chart analysis, it can seem a little overwhelming uh, because it's it's a lot of data, it's a lot of patterns, it's a lot of uh, new terms, new definitions, new words. Uh, there's a thousand different ways to do this, uh, and all of them will tell you uh, they're the best, they're the most profitable. In reality, trading is probably one of the hardest things to do, uh, especially on a, a on a longer uh, time frame. There's going to be thousands of, of traders, so-called traders, traders who will be profitable for a year, maybe even two years, maybe even five years, which is impressive. Don't get me wrong. Being, being profitable for five years as, a, as an actual trader is, is impressive. Uh, if you have an actual system, if you have an idea, uh, if you're putting that edge um, out there and, 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 and adjusting uh, along the way accordingly, that is really, really impressive. But Give it enough time, and most people will blow up their accounts eventually. Uh, so look at the people who've done this for 20, 30, 40 years. Uh, traders like Tom Dante, traders like Jason Shapiro, like Peter Brand. I know Peter Brand gets a lot of shit, especially from crypto traders, calling him grandpa and a, and a fossil. But the guy, I mean, let's be, let's be honest here. If you're trading since 19, what, 73 or something, something, and you're still doing this, and you're still profitable, and not just profitable, but I mean insanely profitable. You're an you're an an absolute absolute godlike creature. It's it's you can't even comprehend how how difficult that is. But back to the uh, back to the question. The reason why a lot of people will shit on technical analysis be, is because they believe we believe that this gives us predictive powers that we're able to predict the future uh, we don't actually think that i mean i don't and you should neither uh, but again what it what it does tell you is what traders have done in the past at different price levels and um, you should be able to form some sort of edge some sort of system that gives you slightly better odds than just going to the casino and putting your money on black or red uh, at the roulette table. Again, if, if price moves sideways, and in general, price can only do three things. It can go up, it can go down, or it can go sideways, sideways which is a meme, I know, but it's true. Um, if this is $25 and this is $20, if price comes back it comes back to $25. I cannot tell you that price surely will go back to $20. I can't, I can't tell you that. And I shouldn't tell you that. And I shouldn't tell you, look, we're back at 25 This is resistance. Uh, so you should short and close at $20. Because once I tell you that, we will break through $25. And we'll go straight up to $78 in one candle. And you'll have blown up your account because you don't have a stop loss. And now you're fucked. What this, uh, this does potentially uh, tell me is, look, I know we're ranging 
and we're ranging until we're not. And I know it seems so fucking cliche and it's so ridiculous. Yeah, we're ranging until we're not. Yeah, no shit, Sherlock. But that's that's the reality. And then you start speculating. Okay, this is the 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 third time or the fourth time at this particular price. Price potentially may may break out of, out of this range because it has tested uh, previous resistance uh, uh, many times already. It's all probability, and that's why you should first and foremost focus on the simple concept of of, of potential uh, resistance and potential uh, support. Support and resistance levels are important, and I'm not going to create a, a whole course now on this. Uh, there's a free course out there from uh, Cred, Crypto Cred or Cred, C-R-E-D. Uh, the guy's a good teacher. He has a free course. Uh, on YouTube, check it out. I know it's good. I've been told it's good. I haven't done it, but I know it's good. Uh, if you're looking to just jump straight into paid courses, I cannot recommend uh, Tom Dante's course enough. I've done it. I've done it multiple times. It's it's really good. It's really really good. The guy's obviously a seasoned professional. Um, just just really 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 check it out. Then we got the uh, the indicators question. I prefer trading naked price action, but again, some traders have 20 different indicators on their screen. If you want to start off with one indicator, uh, I would, again, use probably the 200-day moving average. There are traders out there who will tell you, look, all you need is the 200-day moving average. Once price breaks above the 200-day moving average, you buy, and once it breaks back down below, you sell, and this way you'll be profitable. Well, that's fucking nonsense. I mean, if 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 it really was that easy, literally everybody would have been a profitable trader. It's not that easy. It's not that easy. But what it does tell you is, in general, whether price is uh, is bullish or or bearish. Well, whether we're trending up or whether we're trending uh, down. So it's a good indicator to have on the screen. Uh, starting off with indicators is not something I would recommend at all. Um, simply due to the fact that most indicators are based on price. I mean, a 200-day moving average is the is literally the average of the last 200 days uh, of price action. Um, so price tells you pretty much everything you need. You could look at volume. You could look at open interest. You could look at what I do as well, uh, COD, COT data, uh, commitment of traders, uh, which I tend to look at sometimes, but definitely not always. You have, you have a thousand different indicators. Uh, there's so, so many of them, but um, most of them are, are, I wouldn't say useless, but you don't need them. They definitely do not have to start with them. Um, so yeah, thank you guys again, once again, for watching. Um, what I told you last week remains. I still need to get the hang of structure. It's kind of a uh, all over the place thing. Hoping you'll get through this with me. Uh, it will take me a few more episodes to um, get it right. But uh, yeah, we'll get there. We'll get there. Appreciate it. Appreciate the likes. Appreciate the subscriptions. Appreciate the comments. Uh, again, if you have questions for next week, do not hesitate to ask. If you have chart requests, again, just ask. I won't be charting one day old meme coins, but altcoins are definitely not uh, out of the question. So yeah, tune in next week and uh, see you guys then. Cheers.